Good afternoon, guys, and welcome to my live. It is live with Adriano every second Sunday, and I'm uber excited because today that is uh, joining us right here on hashtag live with Adriano is none other than Paul the Prince. Well, I call Paul my industry brother because we've worked together on so many projects, but moreover, because Paul is one of those trailblazers that's, whose accolades actually speak for itself. So maybe just for you uh, wanting to find out Paul, this is what he sounds like. Uh, this is currently fresh on YouTube, so check it out as well. Uh, there we go. You got to make some time and I'm so grateful that you are making time right about now every Sunday as we get to tune in to that is hashtag live with Adriano every second Sunday that is. So this man is a TV presenter, he's a DJ, uh, he's an actor, he's a voiceover artist, he's a football, okay football, soccer, depending on where you are in the world, uh, fanatic and today he'll be telling us his journey from 2007 in terms of how big he's made it. So shout out to you. I'd love for you to interact with us as well. Get to ask questions, whatever is on your mind, please feel free because Paul studied uh, performing arts at the University of Namibia and he's going to take us through his journey from being in the industry since 2007. And uh, Rumor has it that he might be, you know, a full-time actor very soon. So let's get to ask Paul all these questions. So if you are live with us now, let me quickly just add Paul as the live goes on and uh, share with us. You might be, you know, working with Paul very soon. You never, never, never know. So he's a radio presenter as well. Paul the Prince. What's going on, brother, man? Good, good. What's up, my guy? I'm easy like Sunday morning, my guy. How are you? Ah, it's Sunday <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> no, Sunday morning is the most quiet. I don't know about afternoon. Afternoon is a bit noisy somewhere, my man. <laughs> okay. We're taking it easy. We're taking it easy, my guy. Bo, yeah. welcome to my live and thank you so much for making time, man. Ah, it's a pleasure, man. It's a pleasure. When you asked me to join, I said anything for my brother Adriano, man. Let's see what's up with your show. Absolutely. I almost thought it was a major Absolutely. program when I joined in. I was like, hey, guys, why? <laughs> Hey, come on, on radio, yeah. But I, yeah. I don't know. You know, when you, speak, you know, when you go live on air, that radio voice always just kicks in. But Paul, we're gonna get yeah. right into it. You've been in the industry since two thousand and seven. Tell us about this journey of yours. You studied at the university, and obviously, yeah. one look at you, and you're like, you know what? How is this guy so humble yet he keeps winning? Take us through the industry. <laughs> like when you. Start 2007 what was that journey like you know your breakthrough okay, here um, you are just a talent show yeah first of all i was in a talent show uh you know it's funny let me start from the beginning so i started out by studying yeah. it when i was in high school people okay. asked, what do you want to be what do you want to be i said no i want to be an it tech uh, so i've got a diploma in yeah. IT. so uh before okay. i did my diploma in it i went for a singing competition uh that was at a tv station in Lusaka, zambia so it was called teen star um, okay. So I think I think I was fifteen at the time. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I got second place in the finals to cut the story short. So at the end of that competition, there was something called mm -hmm. International Children's Day of Broadcasting, and then I, I took part in that one the same year in two thousand seven. So we would do the news, you do like your water one, you know that kind of thing, basically. Yeah. So that's where I started. And the guys were like, "No, you don't. You should come back again. Then we do. We, we <laughs> want to so yeah." It was, yeah. I would even say I got into it by chance, I guess, because I went for something yeah. else and started doing something else. So that's, that's when I started yeah. in 2007. From then on, I've done different TV shows. I learned how to edit, how to film, how to direct. As I was at the TV station, so we would do our own uh, program. So uh, yeah. basically, only in 2011, my dad said, I see the passion you have for this. You can go far. So how about you study? Uh, you yeah. Go to you. Yeah, so uh, you know, I yeah. did my Bachelor of Arts in Media Studies. Um, and then, um, yeah, I graduated 2015. I finished and graduated 2016. So I've been with NBC since, since my final year, 2015. Yeah, that's the first number. Wow. I did. Yeah, so yeah. from then on. Since then, you've been. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. since then, you've just been doing. Now, you know, I'm a hoarder of CDs. I'm going to tell you quickly. So this CD, you. <laughs> <laughs> that was signed by you. Look at the date on that, you know. Two thousand okay, and Okay, two thousand and sixteen you signed that. Yeah, um, man. Well, thanks for holding the C D. Come on with it. Yeah. Man, that was, so I'm a that was my first album, man. 
So, well done to you. You know, stay blessed. That's what you said, Paul the Prince, and you've been going big because this is your first, your debut self titled album, and you know, I'm so proud yeah. of what you've achieved thus far. So, maybe just getting into, you know, here you graduate from the University of Namibia. You studied performing arts. You just yeah. did. Um, Wait, don't come I'm kiss and tell. What did he say? What did he say? <laughs> He's telling me I'll not be outworked. Meanwhile, he's doing the most. Oh, oh yeah. I don't know why people are like that, guys. <laughs> yeah, you will not be outworked. But you know, and this is the thing, we keep hustling, but we also keep supporting one another, you know? Yeah. And I think this for me has been one of the things where I can say these are my industry brothers because we celebrate one another. We celebrate, you know, if Paul gets a gig, you know, I'm like, yo, well done, bro. If Louis gets a gig, we all celebrate that gig. And we, yeah. we're here to set up get a, a standard for ourselves now let's talk That's about right. you getting into radio what is that like do you still get nervous before you switch on the on air button because i oh, for me you know personally what? having that i think i was very fortunate to start um when i started my career in tv i was doing radio simultaneously you know um, my uncle he had a program on uh it should be qfm i call him my uncle because you know he was that close like family his name was k smash yeah he had a, a smash five at five I would go there and talk about entertainment and that was QFM in Lusaka. So basically I would do an entertainment segment and then I would see how he was doing it, you know? So that's when I started. Yeah. I had the passion for radio, just generally broadcasting. So yeah, ah, man, I would do radio and TV, right? TV the weekend, weekends and then radio on the weekends. So it was, it was just like what I'm doing now. Yeah. So yeah. fortunately when I did my internship um, in 2014, yes. Yeah. I, had, I worked with a station called Rock FM. So I went back home when I was visiting my dad. And then I, I went to Rock FM. And these guys do like commercial radio. Like, if you think of Rock FM, I'm thinking like, you know, the five FMs of, of South Africa, so on and so forth. So the Metro I FMs, from, yeah. Yeah, man. I, I learned from Thrill. So I like this fast paced yeah. radio, this stinger here, upbeat music, you know, keep it, keep it current, keep it short. There you go, you know. So that's how I did my internship. So from then on, I, I think I joined National in 2016. With the Wataban Radio. Yeah. Show. Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Wataban Radio, Pombili said, you know what? I don't want to do this anymore, man. I'm going to leave you with the Wataban Radio show, man. Like, yeah, it's later. Yeah. Man. You look like you've got the energy for this, man. So, <laughs> shout out to <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, since then, yeah. Since then, I've been. So, from Wataban Radio, then I, I uh, should be 2017, I got a contract to do a weekend show called the Saturday Cafe. Um, okay. On, on National Reform, which is still running. It's still running up to now. Yeah. Uh, that's my baby. That's what is I'm that why you're on air at late night? No, no, no. Saturday Cafe is on Saturday at okay. 10 o'clock. So, yeah, okay, I do cool. sports news. I do the latest hits. I do educational stuff. It's just like a magazine program jam-packed into two hours, you know. So, yeah, yeah. Man, I think I enjoy radio production. I've got a studio in my house, by the way. So, I actually moved to a place with two rooms just so I can get a room for the studio because I wanted like a space okay. for the so artists can come through now. So they they need can no, come through now. We want to record. No, 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 it's just for me. Yeah, yeah. just for me. <laughs> come on, I'm thinking of the Paul the Prince record label. You know, really managing artists, getting artists to record with you. Yeah. Um. Somebody yeah. asked me a question here. Sarah. Sarah is asking, which Adrian also asked, if I do get nervous before yeah. a show. I don't think so. I really don't mm. get nervous before a show. I think if, if, if there's any show that would probably make me nervous is, um, I remember the time, uh, maybe when I started out, maybe you wanted to get nervous, but I've got this way of blending in so quickly. I give myself two, three seconds to realize where I am. And that's it. Those nerves yeah. are gone. Already. If it's the Namas, it's only that first show when you're starting and you don't know what's going to happen. Then yeah. you get nervous. I think you know the feeling as well. But I don't be think I get Absolutely. Like, nervous, nervous where you're sweating and you're like, you know, you can't do it. And, no. I think I've always got the thought of, you know what, how am I going to execute this? And yeah. sometimes I just say, I'm just going to roll with it. So yeah. I don't think, I, to answer Sarah's question, it's the same for radio and TV. Unless it's something very high profile, like maybe I'm going to interview a minister. Mm -hmm. Now you don't want to ask the one yeah. question, is your minister, what type, of, <laughs> what type of suit is that? You know? Exactly. Or oh, get the names people. wrong. Yeah. Or oh, get the names wrong. I think, I think for exactly. me, it's, it's always a thing of... Yeah. Not wanting to get the names wrong because you know coming from Africa and Southern Africa, where all protocol is always observed, yeah. you don't want to get exactly. names wrong for that matter. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, yeah, I, I, I've been watching you and just looking back at 2018, 2019, and maybe before that, 2018 for me has been for you such a, a a big year because this is you going to Kenya, you're going to the Coke Studios, 
then comes 2019, you're making it to home ground. And 2020, you, of course, on Mzanzi Magic's The Queen. Let's start with the Coke Studio experience. What has that been like? You know, because right. here you are, you're just exploring. Let, let's talk about you know that. What, you know what you've done with that question is, I was telling my girlfriend this the other time, that, you know, and sometimes you don't realize what you've achieved until somebody else talks about it. You know? It's, yeah. You know, like, and that's what's happened here. It's like, you know, I'm just saying that, bitch, right? Yeah. Did I do that? Did I just do that? Yeah. Yeah, no, it's because you just made me realize that every year I actually get to do something new, something different, you know, because from Coke Studio mm -hmm. in 2018 to Home Ground in 2019, every individual experience on its own has been a blessing for me. I feel like some of the things that uh, come into fruition are things that I don't even think of. You know, when people see me, yeah. they probably think like I sit down in my house and start plotting like this year, I'm gonna be on the queen. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> like, 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 most people are like, how do you do it? And it's not, I think. Yeah. Really, uh, I'm quite spiritual, you know that already. I think when you're moving with the grace of God sometimes and something is supposed yeah. to be for you, I think it, it really That's does manifest really itself. And, and you don't have to work hard to get it. And if I tell you about every yeah. individual thing, even like for Coke Studio, I got a call from How it happened. Producers. Yeah, I got mm. a call from one of the producers there. And he said, you know what, I'm looking into bringing a female artist. And then he said, would you recommend? And so on and so forth. Because he knows I do entertainment and what's about and radio, so on and so yeah. forth. And we had a relationship before that in terms of working on different projects. So I said, you know what, Lioness is dope. She's dropping some of the hardest stuff here. He said, you yeah. and her are coming. Get your visas ready, my man. Wow. You know what I mean? And it was like that. It wasn't like it wasn't like I pitched to go there, you know? So that's that's pretty yeah. much it. And um uh, for home ground, oh my god. Mm. Adriano home ground for me is a, is a special story for me because uh mm. I know you love sports, I know you love football, menu fan. Yeah. Um but yeah my sister, she was talking <laughs> my sister was talking to me last year and she's like she remembers when I was in my living room and how much I watched football and I said one day I'm going to be on super sport. It's like one of those things yeah. where you speak it into existence. But I always say speak things into existence, but that one is one of the things that I would say really is true. Because I used to tell yeah. them in 2008, nine, I would say, I'm going to be on super sport. Dude. I just, I <laughs> you know what I mean? And then Mini yeah. Mini came through to the Namas and uh, she says, wow, you got the talent, man. We should link up. And even Lungile was there. It's like, yo, you Let's, you know, link up later and exchange and see how the synergy goes, you know, so on and so forth, you know? Yeah. So now, you know, when you're talking to celebrities, you don't want to, like, you don't want to, like, take their word for it. You don't want to be like, you know what? They say, yeah. go link up, so let's go. No. Yeah. Because but firstly, you don't want to sound like a fan, but also you, yeah. you, you want to be assured that, you know what, this is friendship and this is a relationship we're building. Exactly. So Mini came yeah. down to Namibia. I think it was in uh, August or something. Uh -huh. Yeah. She came for a show with Olive Entertainment. So I saw her sitting in the VIP section with a couple of people. So she saw me, she's like, hey, Paul, she remembered me from Namas. Come, come and sit here, you know? So when I was sitting there, I was like, yeah. I mean, it's good to see you back, you know? I'm actually coming to South Africa, so I want to get a tour of the studios because I know you do home ground, I love the show. But she's like, yeah, no mm. problem. Just DM me when you're coming there and so on and so forth. Yeah. Now, obviously, when you DM a celebrity with over 3 million followers, you don't expect a reply. Yeah. Um, yeah. I DM that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> my girlfriend laughing, but it's true, right? I mean, Three million followers, but she's not even following me at the time. So, um, so yeah, she did follow me back. I didn't ask her to do it, but she followed me. And then when I went to South Africa, I mean, when I was preparing for the trip, I said I'm coming in two weeks. So she gave me yeah. a number. So here's my WhatsApp number. When you come through to South Africa, hug, yeah. then yeah, we can link up. I was like, oh shit, you know. But I didn't go around. To oh wow. I mean, I mean, his number, you know. Uh, yeah. So I kept it under wraps, like nobody knew. Yeah. Just been talking about it. You gotta now, keep it under wraps. You have to do that. So fast forward to yeah. a few days before the trip. And I said, no, my stuff is ready. I should be there in a few days. I was going for the Dr. Toomey concert in 2018. So the ticket I booked yeah. for Dr. Toomey's concert. And then yeah. prior to that, I got a, a, an email from uh, Gauteng Sports Awards. They said, hey, Paul, we want you to come and uh, present an award at the Gauteng Sports mm -hmm. Awards. And I was like, damn, wow. all this is falling into place. So basically, I've got Dr. Yeah. Toomey on Friday. Saturday, we've got Gauteng Sports Awards. You know, uh, then the Monday, hopefully, I can tour studios with, with Mini. So I get yeah. to South Africa. Before I get to South Africa, Mini surprises me, sends me a WhatsApp message saying, hey, uh, I just want to give you a heads up. I talked to my producer. I said, why don't you just come and tour? Why don't you guest host? And I'm like, wow. I, I got to share a stage with like Mini Club, Mini Jones. Wow. I'm like, Yo, wow. you know, this is stuff that you don't ask for. Like, I'm not saying, I'm not yeah. telling people like the keys don't ask, no. But I mean, sometimes mm -hmm. when you genuinely approach people and they see what you, you can do, 
they will eventually give exactly. you opportunities that are fitting for you. You know, sometimes you don't force mm. anything. You know, that's why when I Absolutely. say, you tell me all these things and you say what has happened, it's like, it feels good to hear them because when you sit down, it's, you forget about what you've achieved and how it happened, you know? Exactly. So, because you keep wanting to do the next and the next and the next. But one thing that I've just realized, uh, Paul, what you've just said now, you, while you take a sip there, is you mentioned something and that is the word genuinely. Because I think yeah. the approach at times is not a thing of, I'm approaching you for a genuine message to say, you know what, here I am, this is my story, I want to, can you guide me? Can you take my hand and let's do this together? Because many yeah. a time people always come with malice intent as opposed to, you know, like you said, you know, here you are uh, inboxing a celebrity. How many inboxes don't you, for example, get, you know, with people yeah. doing things with malice intent and not necessarily for saying, you know what, I want to grow. Uh, I need a hand. Please guide me yeah. through or how do I do A, B, C, D. Exactly. So, continue. I always tell people, like, you don't always have to force your stuff on people. Also, I found a nice, a nice filter now, you know, looking too, too oily. Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> Like, bro, it has actually like, zoomed you know, like, your face in. So just to make yeah. <laughs> so you see that the, 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 what you said is true. When, you, when you're genuine with your approach and genuine with what you are trying to achieve. Absolutely. I feel like that's when yeah. things work out better for you. Rather than forcing stuff. Nobody wants to be pressured or bugged or nagged into anything. You know what I mean? And all, all these stories I'm telling you, see, I never nagged anybody. You know, even like recently, like I'll talk about, that was 2019. Um, let's talk 2019. About yeah, let's talk about yeah, yeah. And... Um, that's the queen, you know? So I went there for something else. I went there for, for, um, to meet Lungile for some business, you know? Cause he sent me a message saying, mm -hmm. come down to SA, uh, yeah. we should link up and speak. Now, prior to that, SK, when SK Koza comes to Namibia, we, he used to stay with me and, and, and my cousin, Mr. Chola. So, uh, yeah. so we always used to have a good time together. So I told him, SK, I'm finally coming down to SA after a long time. So, yeah. Yeah, man, let's link up. SK was like, oh, snap, my man, when you come through, I'm going to get your teeth done, man. We're going to go and, you know, we're going to go for massages, man. That so, guy's energy another level. SK's yeah, energy, man. I can't. I can't I'm, I'm literally sweating just hearing his name. <laughs> exactly. Oh, somebody, somebody's asking, well, what's your email address? Can you send out a message? My email address is on my profile, man. Just when you click on the email, I'll get the email. Thank you very much. So basically, yeah, yeah man, so SK... Like, he was not even the main mission of that plan uh, to go to SA. So I went there yeah. for something else, you know what I mean? So um, I was planning to stay for like three, four, maximum five days to a week. You know what I mean? Hey, mm -hmm. my man, the way that trip turned around, my man on his head. Like, I think I flew there on I Friday. saw. Yeah, I flew, I flew there on a Friday. I think I only met Lungi on a Monday. Uh, in the evening, I linked up with SK. My goodness, man, it was, uh, yo. <laughs> I told SK <laughs> what he did for me during that trip. I don't know nobody else has yeah, ever yeah. done that for me. So what he did is um, when we when we linked up there, he was always so open to introducing me to everybody else. You know, like, hey, this is Paul, you know, in Namibia, he does like radio and TV. Basically, like, similar to me, but, you know, he's one of the best guys there. You know, and I never speak of myself like that. Yeah. You never find me like, yo. <laughs> so it's I'm one of the best, friend. yeah. Yeah, you know, as your friend, mm -hmm. you know, putting you on that level. <laughs> and I always appreciate yeah. for that, you know. And, yeah. bro, like, you know, when you go to SA, you can't stay there for, like, a month, man, because you need to pay for accommodation. Oh, yeah. And exactly. this, this said, you know what? Stay as long as you like, my man. You're going to be here. Oh, wow. Uh, I'm going to get you from And you're too fixed as well. Sorry? Got fixed as well. Yeah, my team got fixed, too, because his fiance is a yeah. dentist, man. So we went to the dentist. Yeah. So, yeah, no, the next day when we linked up with Tuesday, we went to the Queen, innit? Went to, went to, to, to tour the place and what, what, what. Met yeah. everybody there, took some pictures, got some voice bites for my show. Yeah. But then, SK then talked to my dad, man. He told my dad, you know what, I'm going to put your son on the Queen, man. <laughs> and, like, you know, my yeah. dad is a son of the Queen. Like, I think my dad is oh, wow. the Queen. Like, he loves the Queen, yeah. <laughs> So when he heard that, he was so happy, you know, it's like, yeah, that's dope. And for sure, I mean, SK made it happen. So shout out to him. I don't think any of that would be possible without SK. So we shot an episode for everybody who's been asking. It should be episode 138 or 139 or 140. The reason why I don't yeah. know is because they shoot so ahead in advance that... Um, that you don't know. Yeah, that I don't remember because you got the, the, yeah. the director's board that has the episode on it. I just forgot what number it was. But I know it should be coming okay. out either next week or the week after that. So, yeah, man, okay. we had a good time, man. I think, yeah, I've never had so much fun like that I've had, like, when I went to SA there, you know. Yeah. It was uh, an experience for me, you know. You see how these people do their thing. 
acting and bouncing off each other and the professionalism in terms of the production yeah you know it was just mind blowing for me to see so yeah. many good thespians at work in one joint it was just mm -hmm. yo you know what i mean and everybody was showing yeah. up i think when i was there they were so surprised some people still think i'm there when they see me in the street like, what are you doing i'm looking for and i'm like no i <laughs> i keep Look, telling them everybody let's go did for what i thought you're going to move like this is me like waiting okay paul listen i'm flying to joburg ne mean i'm coming uh because i still think you're in joburg but you know paul you you mentioned the keyword na and i come back to our industry because our industry is so growing right here back in nam yeah uh the, the word professionalism how profound is it that you know you speak of productions you know you and i have worked on the namas we've worked uh you know on radio together uh let's talk about professionalism and you know is it that artists today take this industry really serious or not because you uh, you you ask yourself how is it that artists in this country do so much yet we're not getting there we're just not hitting that international mark if you want to put it that way yeah quick shout out to way before i get into all this man yeah, thank you so much for way, way, way. we did the, she remembers the first namas we did we we got a call uh 2015 and you know it's my first time i think going on such a trip where mtc pays for you And then uh, Emil now I think it was on the production oh. people he said you know what we want you and we are going to do the good morning Namibia and this was like cold in the coast man it was like freezing yeah. but I don't know what made me wake up and go for that event man like that, that, <laughs> that, that actual broadcast but where I was with me on the stage that time and yeah my yeah. sister has been home for days but yeah let's talk about professionalism and the attitude when we talk about artists we're talking about collectively right we're talking about musicians we're talking about uh, collective artists yeah, collectively artists yeah and, yeah so i think there's one thing you know that lacks a lot in, in in like most people that even approach me personally in terms of you know let's start with even just greeting people or talking yeah. about where where you're going to talk about business from I feel like yeah. there should be a time and place for everything. You remember when I told you in the beginning Adriano of like all these things that have been happening recently. Nothing of it was forced, mm. it was synergy, it was you know when you connect with someone genuinely on a level on a person level without just going to yeah. business. I feel like everything else becomes easier. But once you try and force down your art on somebody else, they will avoid right. you at all costs. You know what I mean? So mm. I think we need to get to the business of etiquette. You know what I mean? Absolutely. How do you approach people? How do you answer your yeah. phone? What time do you send your songs? How do you send your songs? How do you send an email? You no, know, just uh you know, yeah. I think for the longest time I have a problem with our artists where it's a thing of they constantly hog your inbox. They you know that DM yeah. and they constantly like, hello yeah. or just send your link this is my work this is my work. Yeah. Well, I feel you. Now, I hope I, I hope some people don't get offended. Yeah. Yeah, I hope they don't get yeah. offended but it's just here trying to open up of seeing how other people do it. And exactly. um why do I have you know address? You're not mm. sending me an email. You know, I've edited it there for a reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. even when you send an email, you have to know who you're approaching. I feel like certain things are not exactly. hard to know. I feel like certain things mm. are really not hard to know. I can't come to Adriano. Like, excuse me. When you're working at Energy and say, Adriano, I want to bring an advert. Uh, can I send you my advert? And how much money are you <laughs> going to charge me? Now, Adriano, <laughs> what department were you working in when you were at Energy? I was a radio presenter. <laughs> Let's start there. Like some people think yeah. that radio presenters do all the jobs at a radio station. It's not the case. Yeah. There's different departments. Absolutely. There is Yeah, even even uh, yeah. Tozamile says uh professionalism is Professionalism, I have to agree. Absolutely. Very important. How you you know guy that is a receptionist, there's the guy that does the entire production. So they look at yeah. what type of advert, what type of songs I mean yeah. you're a great artist and I respect your rapping but you know your rapping might be having vulgar music or words in it so I can't just you see, as a radio presenter grab your art of of yeah bringing a clean version to a uh, to the station and you know this is the thing like you know I see the posts on Facebook and people say yeah uh, radio station don't play too much Namibian hip hop Local. but the question you guys have yeah. to ask yourself on social media is how many of those uh, hip hop artists in Namibia are actually creating clean versions of a song and bringing them to radio first of all because exactly. there's a problem I have yeah. with an artist like sometimes I have to follow artists personally to get music and I know some of them mm. can attest to that personally I have to come to you and say yeah. yo I've seen a new single when are you going to send it to me but I feel like sometimes if you have a marketing plan a strategy you got your clean versions laid out like I'll give an example Boyty is not even for me but when yeah. I was with Boyty at Coke Studio I met her manager Bash at the time and 
when I told him, yo, no, listen, now I work at National FM. The first thing the guy told yeah. me is, give me your email address. I'll send you the, the, the DJ pack for Poetry yeah. Single, What's That, in Bakai. Bruv, when yeah. Poetry Song came to me, yeah, I didn't even have to like chase her down for it. They gave me a clean version, dirty version, instrumental, a cappella. These are not things that are secrets in the studio. And the artwork. Can... Even that, you see that. So these are things yeah. that artists need to take seriously. Get a mm. clean version, get a bio done, so that when you send something yeah. to someone who doesn't know you, they've got an idea yeah. of who you are, first of all, and then they can play yeah. the clean version of your song, which is required by radio at this point in time, because you can't play vulgar music in the yeah. unless you're doing a late night <laughs> show. So you see that, yeah. it starts there. Like artists, we always want to rush to say, yeah, no, the people are not playing my stuff. They don't want to support me. But yeah. what are you doing behind the scenes to make your work professional? Why is it yeah. that we've got three have versions you, of Chris Brown's music in, in the States? Yeah. But you are next door to me. Have you, you found, your, have you found yourself? Version. Absolutely. Absolutely. But have you found yourself in a position where Namibian artists or artists just in general feel that you're in charge of doing the marketing for them? Despite the fact that their song plays on the radio or, you know, you've maybe given them leeway for, for, for their music to get on air. But now there's that expectation of, why is Paul not playing my song? Why is Paul not interviewing me? Why am I not getting invited by Paul? Why am I not featuring on a Wataguan show, for example? Yeah. You see, so what you're saying is true. In as much as this happens everywhere, like you need to ask yourself, let, look at, let's look at South Africa. You know, the reason why, for example, songs like John Vuli Gates, you know, just to mm. do something recent, was so big is how they even, you know, marketed their stuff. You know, in terms of like even them as a profile themselves. How much are you marketing yourself online? How much are people talking about your products? It can maybe be five people yeah. or ten. It doesn't, I feel like most people want to be famous before doing the work. You know what I mean? Like, everybody <laughs> wants to be famous. It's fine. It's nice being famous. But like, how much work are you doing behind the scenes also to make your quality work spoken of? Because it doesn't exactly. matter people are talking about you, but then your stuff is not like mm. market worthy. So, First of yeah. all, the content that you're making has to be good. If it's a, if it's a song, it has to be like dope, well yeah. And then when you take it anywhere, anybody can play it. Mm. But not a song that exactly. Hey, this mastering is bad. Hey, yeah. Why is this and and and, so that, mm. <laughs> and, and so, this is the thing for me. Who are we? I, I remember the very first time I interviewed you, and you know, there's people might take offense in this, and maybe as an artist that does music for yourself. You, you mentioned something, and I, I think Irene and I could always speak about it on air, especially when artists would bring their debut album and there's 20 songs on it. Because my question yeah. would be, what are you doing next year? Mm. If your same set, the first song on your track sounds like the 20th song, and you said something so profound that people need to stop creating music for the Namibia Annual Music Awards because there's yeah. bigger than that. Because you need to look at the longevity of your that. career. And I think I'll never forget that because that is the approach I then had with every artist. So, okay, cool. I interview you, but then are you here next season? You know, that for me has always been that thing of how is it that you've got upcoming artists that keep coming up, but they're just never coming up, you know? Is it and that's no offense to me. If, if we're going to talk about like the Namibian music landscape, it's a bit difficult because mm. I've, seen, I've seen like a lot over the past 10 years as I've been doing the work is... The money, again, Adrian, mm. you cannot blame the artists for doing the, the, the music for the Namas. I don't blame them anymore. It was just a word of advising. Yeah. In terms of if you want to go international, then you have to stop looking at yeah. the Namas all the time. Because yeah. are you really doing music for your fans? Exactly. Or are you just doing music to get paid for that one Namas? Mm. And then next year you make another album just for the Namas. But I feel like your yeah. product is good enough yet. Yeah? You're going to win Absolutely. Or even if you don't win the money, you're going to get better opportunities, mm. yeah? That are going to open other doors yeah. for you. And I feel like some people get disappointed when they don't win, they don't do music anymore. But it also comes down <laughs> to like the music, the music landscape in Namibia. First of all, when it comes yeah. to paying artists, MCs, makeup artists, DJs, I feel like some mm. companies make a lot of money, yeah, but they don't pay artists what they deserve. Pay back the artists. Yeah, I think it, it's not just music, but entertainment in itself, art, the art form in itself, because it's more like, I love the art, but I hate the artist, if, if that is the right <laughs> way to you know, uh, I, I know your, 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 your partner is a makeup artist, so I have a shoot for my law firm, but I want everybody to look good in this image, because this is the image and the branding we're putting out there. Yeah. 
but i hate the makeup artist yeah because now makeup artist is asking me 400 dollar per person but do i realize the effort that this makeup artist needs to put in because yeah. have i went or gone to mac to find out what type of products it is you understand so indirectly we love the art but we actually hate the artist if you have to put it in that way like Paul, two more questions. I'm going to head into a few of the questions that some of your followers has been asking. I think oh, you briefly uh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I did okay. put up a question out there just to ask, you know, what is it that you want to ask Paul? So, one of the questions here was Paul, you have had your in- your your career so long in this industry. What has been your success to your longevity? And I think that has been 15 years that you've been in the industry right now <laughs> if we take it off from 2007 like you're counting man damn i think <laughs> <laughs> you old okay. my guy you old yeah uh, i am i am old yeah sometimes my girlfriend calls me grandpa but anyway uh <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> yeah uh so <laughs> i think the the secret is there even a secret to the success man and you know what i i mm. in as much as i like people calling me successful yeah i i don't know Yes there's been a degree of success and I think I shouldn't really sometimes I get too hard on myself Adriano you have no idea of in terms of the same yeah. things that I planned to achieve but I didn't do them but then I sit down and think of what has happened over the past couple of years with just showing yeah. up and doing the job that is yeah. my secret to success show up absolutely do the job and do it well yeah. to the best of your ability there's nothing else mm. I don't think there's nobody we bribe there's nobody we we didn't go to a go big or go home. Yeah. Big or go home, you know? That yeah, that's it. You got to get skin. I think this Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this routine is one though. And I think maybe this is a message to the young ones is that you got to have thick skin. You you if you want to put yourself out there, you got to be open for criticism, you know? And maybe uh in terms of critics, maybe from your position, I know person and I think I've shared this with you on a personal level. This question is how have you maintained your relationship well and i think this is it this the question is how have you maintained it well but i think what she was trying to or the follower was asking is how do you keep it in a secret how do you protect your relationship despite being a celebrity because i regard you as a celebrity but moreover because oh, of the purpose like, of like relationship with I, my girlfriend oh okay yeah, yeah. how do you maintain that how do you keep it success how I'm glad I'm speaking while she's somewhere here in the room because you can ask her when we started she didn't understand when I said I don't really post this a lot because you see like I I think it works for me some other people it doesn't you know some people want to post mm. all the time I don't post it all the time it's just simply because yeah. you know some people are not following you for you some people just want to see what you have to and some people out to just yeah. what you have And I think I've always said this to my girlfriend like in terms of there's no point posting happy pictures on social media if your foundation is not strong or happy. Exactly. You know so what yeah. are you actually showing off? Are you in the relationship to show off that your girlfriend is pretty or are you genuinely sharing a happy moment? Because I feel like yeah. the private moments for me are what matter the most and what I usually put online. So Exactly. Personally, for my relationship yeah, it's, it's we've had some challenges over the years I'm mean, okay not over the years, mm. over the months. <laughs> <laughs> you know like it was very hard in the beginning for her to understand why I don't like post sometimes I don't post a yeah. story it can be a man I never put a picture but that's because I don't like people to put in too much attention on that I yeah. feel like when you come on and not to focus on like, personal life you know because, yeah, because you the bit thing you man they're like yeah I know your girlfriend's an experience yeah hey, what is that guy she's mm. there hey, I saw it you know that sometimes you don't want to be overwhelmed by that stuff man like sometimes you know yeah. your girlfriend is that but you don't want to know every single yeah. detail you don't want to be on some yeah. I I feel I'm not that kind of person who wants to know every single yeah. thing you know would you talk to at 2:55 p.m. somebody saw you at the bar and then you went to the to, yeah. to the bathroom then you were stopped by a guy in an orange shirt I feel like <laughs> you know people got to give you those details sometimes they make things sound the way they are not and then you start having trust issues so I feel like Absolutely. give the person yeah give your partner the freedom to be who they are like personally mm-hmm. without being influenced by you you know I think I've told yeah. this before like I don't want people to know you just for me like When they see you they must not always mm. ask you about ways Paul how is he doing yeah. when they see you you are you you know what i mean like yeah, exactly you you in the individual you know, at the end of the day yeah no she she says she understands now <laughs> yeah, i'm saying oh, wow. like, let me well, well, yeah this well, well greetings to her is, wow is, okay is, so oh shy oh shy okay i see you yeah, but you know i think 
uh, we're having moving into the last question and this is uh maybe just something profound for me or from me to ask you how is it or what can we expect for for your followers what can your followers expect um in the next seasons to come in your life um yeah, sorry, I was... <laughs> yeah. give the guy like the recipe of why why the things are being happening the way they're happening <laughs> i think i'm going to stick to this i'm going to stick to the same story you know what um I planned on releasing an album this year. Last year I did okay. a single but then with COVID-19 and trying to adjust the way we work, you know, I'm a DJ and I do radio and I do what. You know, has COVID affected you or not? Yeah. Has Sorry? COVID affected you in any bad way whatsoever? Man, I've you know I wake up and say I'm still blessed to be doing what I love to do, you know, and that's that's what I focus on. Doing. Right. And as much as we've right. got a couple of gigs, uh we were booked for certain things and then they they canceled them and it's not people's fault. Health comes Yeah. First, you know what I mean? So just be alive exactly. and be healthy and being able to do what you're doing is 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 a blessing. And I know you had covid recently as well, you know what I mean? And it's good you're here, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know so exactly. but you also still have your job, you know what I mean? When you sit down and see the number yeah. of people that have been either laid off, lost income, mm. you know, you just and, count your blessings, man. Yeah, man. So basically I just come my yeah. I'm a glass half full kind of person. I'm not a glass half empty. Yeah. You know what I mean? Sometimes people don't understand how I stay so positive when you see me out there. It's because, yes, the, at the end of this one thing about life, there's always going to be a problem. Always. Yeah. Even the richest people have got problems. Have But got problems. But don't just show it on social media. That's the thing. <laughs> even, I'm yeah. every single, even when you come home, you may buy groceries now, but then maybe your car will break down. You may fix the car, yeah. but then again, if someone gets sick, you may, someone gets sick, you pay for that. Then at work, You know, it's always yeah. something new. Like, the, your you know, this this reminds me of a friend of mine. You know, she recently bought a house and she was so happy because, you know, it was something, you know, you, when someone buys a house, you celebrate that. And then it reminded me of when I bought my, my, my house. The yeah. first week, your gate breaks, the mm. bulbs, the pipe starts breaking, the toilet is not working. The That fence is an just, example. Your house, yeah. you, you understand. So nothing is perfect. Although you've, achieve this moment there will be coming obstacles will be coming your way no matter what that's, you know that's what i want to i want to tell the followers i want to tell the followers as well yeah. when you get what you've been praying for do not stop yeah. working to keep it because that's what people do Absolutely. that's the mistake we make mm. like oh i finally got this job now i'm here you get comfortable there is no growth mm. in comfort there is absolutely, absolutely. no growth in comfort If you're comf- yeah mm. you can be you can be content with what you have but if you want to be successful yeah. then you have to strive for the best you want to be the best Absolutely. at whatever you do and you don't get satisfied if people call you the best <laughs> you still want to learn something yeah. new you still want to learn exactly. how to do graphic design you want to learn how to you know so don't stop there yeah. people get people mm. get too comfortable that's the problem i've noticed that yeah. like, not just artists but generally but also just that having that, that moment of Yeah. Mm. And not having yeah, that mindset of constantly right. thinking yeah, you're, you're constantly thinking that I've arrived. Ah, right, stop it. What you're doing? You're doing a war thing. Kinafaso, my man. Come on with it. Listen, I'm, I'm the interviewee here. No, no, no. I mean, I mean, I'm taking you as an example. Bro, you would have been yeah. comfortable. We just yeah. going to do premium banking here and going home. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But no. I don't know if Saki wants to act. I don't know if Saki yeah. wants to do the numbers. Adriano Visaki used yeah. to do radio on weekends. Adriano used to host the Winner Fast. That is yeah. comfortable. You would have been mm. comfortable with doing what you studied, what you what you got pays your monthly bills basically. The yeah. one that you know this month I'm getting paid so and so amount. But yeah. you're doing what you love. So everybody who's watching now just absolutely. remember there is absolutely no growth in comfort. In if, comfort. If yeah. Here, yeah. Please, That's your TED talk. Yeah. You're not growing. If I get my house here, I've sat down. And that's it. Yeah. If I stay like this for one week, Adriano, how am I going to get yeah. the next month to get the next bills, brother? Absolutely. How am I going to get the yeah. next month to do? You know, if I Where to is it going to come from? Yeah. You see that? So you can't just kick your feet up when you get what you've been praying for. Oh, come on, somebody. Don't yeah. forget it. Come on. <laughs> you know what? If I, if I was like your... If I was like your girlfriend said an old man right I'll be saying you know what Paul I think you must become a preacher but oh, yeah you probably heard this a lot 
so much my guy <laughs> me, Adriano, man. cheers to uh, Take care. a successful year brother please don't check my bank balance tomorrow at the office man. Chill. ah get out of here <laughs> I'm looking out. cheers <laughs> cheers <Cool. brother. laughs> bye there you go ladies and gentlemen that was Paul the Prince right here on hashtag live with Adriano so two Sundays from now we might be featuring one of your favorite personalities and just get to learn how they've achieved what they've achieved so Please do inbox me, get to follow, get to share this video. And we're all about inspiring the next generation, but also learning from the very, very, very best right here in our industry. My name is Adriano Fisahi. Uh, get to share this video. Also, there is no growth in comfort. So if you are comfortable in where you are, ask yourself, how do I get out of this inbox? Ask for mentorship and really just get to ask yourself, how can I grow from where I feel that I've been stagnant in my life. So from my side, Adriano, peace, love, and happiness. <laughs>